What is going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson, and we are in the Big Dog Studio once again. Got my man Jonathan Mack. What's up, Jonathan? Nothing much, just hanging out. I know that's right, man. It is. Um, we are coming up on my favorite time of the year, and um, there's football on TV. There is football on TV, and people are like, "Oh, Josh, it's preseason." Doesn't you know? It, it's just whatever. I'm not watching that crap. I will watch that crap every minute of it. Yep, I've seen damn near every single preseason game. Now, I'm not, like, watching, watching, but it's in the background, right? Like, it's that sweet, heavenly sound of pads hitting, commentating. Even the terrible commentators, it's just something about football being talked about. Yeah, I'm not excited for Chris Collinsworth. (laughs) I have actual beef. He's the worst. I don't like Chris Collinsworth either. Um, But, man, I tell you, it just makes me so happy. And so, like, when I see we're, like, a week out from, like, the Hall of Fame ceremony and they do the Hall of Fame game, I know that not a week will go by through February where there won't be football on television. And that makes me really, really fired up. I'm really excited. We're two weeks out. What are we, two weeks out from college? Three weeks from NFL, right? Yeah. Because they have one more preseason week, then a gap week, and then they kick off, like, early September. Yeah. First week of September is the NFL. Yeah. And I think like the third or whatever is college, but yeah. well, they actually start kicking off Labor Day weekend. Yeah. It's like the smaller schools yeah. start like, and then big August. time college football is like the weekend of the third or something. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. I just, I love all of it. Um, football is always a big deal in, in my family's house. I know football is a big deal to you. And you know, what are you, um, what are you excited for this year? You got some big changes with your team, the Steelers. Uh, yeah, excited. I mean, this is the first year since uh, my childhood that it's a different team. Like, nobody, uh, Ben was the last holdout from, like, the 2004 yeah. year uh, for us. So so Just, it's going to have a whole new look for you. Yep. Unless there was an injury, you saw somebody else playing. But he was a, a, yeah, it was always a staple some, of the team. Yeah, it was always somebody there. Somebody filling in. Yeah. So I saw a little bit of the game on a flight the other day and um, who was it? Pickett. Yep. That the rookie. Yep. He was doing pretty, he looked pretty nice. Yeah. I hope that he's good because that, uh, that draft pick was clearly just overcompensation for the fact that we uh, missed out on Dan Marino, who was a quarterback from Pitt Pitt. that the Steelers didn't draft. And then he ends up being Dan Marino. I think that uh, they're hoping this is a 40 year later play. Yeah. I think that this was a a logistical, like we're not going to mess up on this again, type of pick. Well, he looked nice against like third stringers. So, I mean, who knows? Yeah, we shall see. I hope, I hope that he's good, but I have no judgments at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Um, what else are you excited about with, with football? You're into college football, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, is Notre Dame going to be beating up on any nobodies start the start the I year? I mean, shit, we're starting off against Ohio State. Ah, fair, so fair, fair. <laughs> it's because it's they're Ohio State's preseason number three, Notre Dame's number five. You know, we got a new coach, new quarterback. It is a very... Um, it is a different looking team. It is a different looking deal. Um, I'm excited about it though. If, like, I, if I had a dollar for every time I heard Notre Dame say that, I might be as rich as you know the people in Notre Dame. Well, man, look. Well, first of all, they do have some money. They got some crazy amounts of coin. Um, it. I'm excited. I'm excited about the coach. I mean, we haven't had. I mean, Kelly was there forever, and so then his ignorant tail went down to LSU. They're not even in the rankings. Um, the new coaches recruiting class is ranked high, real, real high at Notre Dame. So I don't know. It's cool. I think Logan and I might try to go to Vegas for the Shamrock series. They're playing at the Raiders new stadium, um, BYU, but it'll still be a fun yeah. like experience. So we're going to try to see if we can go out there. Yeah. The only school I like less than Notre Dame is BYU. Oh, well, I'm going to go watch both of your loathe schools <laughs> uh, play. Um, you know, we're going to try to get up some UVA games, you know, this year, your alma mater, and check that out. I they got a new coach also. Yeah. They I got a whole new deal. I don't know what's going on there, man. Yeah, I don't know if I could go uh, back to UVA football games just because I've, like, literally seen how the sausage is made. <laughs> well, it's different now. They got the dude from Clemson, right? Wasn't it the offensive coordinator or defense yeah. coordinator? Uh, offensive, Tony Elliott. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. But I haven't heard a whole lot about what's going on, so I feel like there's not a lot of buzz yeah, that's about that, what's going on in That's Louisville. because with uh, with college football, it takes a year, maybe I would say even uh, two to three for uh, new coaches, like recruiting class and his uh, system his to system, really yeah. be 
to really be brought in. So you're still kind of dealing with the uh, Bronco Mendenhall guys. Is that quarterback still there, though? Yeah. He was nice. Brandon Armstrong. That dude's a beast. Yeah, he's a really nice guy, too. Is he? Um, he was there while I, I was there. I think you mentioned that before. He's a gamer, man. Like, he just is straight gamer. He will go. So, anyway, you ever watch um, Hard Knocks? HBO? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, what do you think of that show? Um, I think people like to revel in misery, so it's fun to watch the Lions <laughs> and... Uh, Want to watch the Lions and or the Jaguars or yeah. uh, the Browns suffer? Yeah, so I really, really enjoy that show. I love inside looks at any type of, like, team dynamics and stuff, but particularly football, because I'll stand by the statement I'm about to make. I don't think that there is any sport, any sport that comes close to comparing to the dynamic the relationships, the bond of a football team. And I love seeing the inner workings of that. I love seeing the the relationships, you know, forming. I love watching people go through the process. I love watching. I think one of the reasons I love preseason is I love it when you got these dudes who are on the fringe who are on this roster at this point of 90 people and they know it's going to get whittled down to, what, 53? Is that the number? And you're watching these preseason games, and these dudes are literally, like, every snap counts because it's their only shot to, hey, get some notice or or not because they're going to start whittling down. And then you got the dudes who are just beasts. They're a lock, right? Like, it's just going to happen. Um, You know, and you kind of see how they're going. But to see the dynamic between the players – and the coaches, and the passion, and whether it's college, whether it's pros. I mean, a lot of people like pros. There's no passion. It's just they're there for a check or whatever. I push back on that a lot. I push back on that a whole lot. Like, yes, it is a job. It is a business. But I'm sorry. These are still young dudes playing a game that they've been playing since they were a kid, and there's passion. The, the crowd of people that like to argue that really have no leg to stand on now with the NIL deals with college because now it's like, okay, they're getting paid to play now too, yeah. um, a majority at least, uh, right. for the major schools. So it's like, wow, it never made a difference. Who who would have guessed that? Right. But yeah, that's my favorite part of the uh, preseason is being able to see a dude from like Montana State Technical Community College yep. somehow make an NFL roster because he – uh good running back a good defensive player yeah Yeah. i like to see it when the rookies come in one of the 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 lions are doing hard knocks right now and um it's the lions so it's whatever um a lot of our team are lions fans because we have the location in detroit shout out jeff okuda legend (laughs) well that's right and you know he's a client also Um, a bunch i think there's like six seven of the lions now are clients um but so they just drafted like number two overall hutchison uh, yeah. defensive tackle out of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, Michigan, for me, is apparently how Notre Dame and BYU are to you. Like, Michigan and Ohio State are, are your, for me, Notre Dame and BYU for you. Um, but anyway, I'm a fan of, like, players. Like, I might hate Michigan, but I can't hate on this dude because he's just a freaking beast. And so they were showing him, like, this guy in practice, Right. I think his signing bonus is like 23 or $25 million, like something crazy like that. He's a 22-year-old kid. He comes in there. This dude's in practice just beasting out, gets into the first preseason game, first two snaps. It's like, I don't know, tackle for loss, and, you know, maybe it was a sack or something like that. And the guy, his motor is just insane. And, like, he has to be, right, because he's number two overall. you got to show up and go. Then they got another dude on the team, this guy Rodriguez. He was drafted late, like sixth round. So you're, and I think people don't understand just because you're drafted in the draft doesn't mean you're making that team. Like first couple rounds, highly likely. But you're like fourth, fifth, sixth round pick. Well, also, people need to understand that the difference between uh, first round and even like the third, fourth round, and for regular people, it's a lot of money. But yeah. for for NFL players and like the kind of stuff that they have to deal with, 
uh, a fourth round pick, like the difference between first and fourth round is financial security. Like yeah. you don't have a lot of the guarantees. It's a lot more incentive based. You don't oh, have yeah. that base salary. So yeah, this dude Rodriguez, he's out of I think Texas A&M uh, linebacker and he was drafted late sixth round and he's there with the lions. And this guy's just like, are you sure it's not Evan Rodriguez, Oklahoma state? No, I thought he was out of Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Um, I mean, I might be wrong. I'm not 100% sure. But dude's small, but he's a freaking beast. And, like, he's all over. He's on special teams, killing him. He's, you know, the second, third team or fourth team, killing him. And he's, like, setting the tone, like, in linebacker meetings and stuff. And I just love watching these dudes who are taking full advantage of the opportunities, right? And so it's just pretty cool. I don't know. Football is just on the brain. It just has me fired up. But it has me thinking about, you know, when I see those team dynamics and that passion and, like, how in football, you know, it takes to execute plays to win. Like, you really need all 11 dudes executing. You know, if only four linemen, you know, show up and they do exactly what they're supposed to do and one of the dudes doesn't, it all is not going to happen. Well, yeah, you got uh, 22 guys on the field on uh, cumulatively both sides of the ball fighting head trauma to try and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. execute a scheme. So that's it's, right. a, it's a beautiful thing. And and it really is if you watch it. And I know there's a lot of people listening to me not care about football, but odds are they, they do like football because it is like the number one sport in the country um and if you say baseball baseball is only the national oh. pastime because there's a bunch of stuff happening in between the innings it's nonsense <laughs> it, you got to have a pastime to watch baseball you shouldn't have I to stretch in the middle of anything yeah, that and you watch aren't you stretching walking around out there doing nothing i don't know anyway i won't even go down that route but you know i it, it is you say it's a beautiful thing and it really is a beautiful thing to to watch all of these people execute the assigned tasks and have success, right? And you and you can see it. it. Devin always teases. She goes, I don't understand how you just saw that happen. She's like, it was so fast. I'm like, well, I've been watching this crap and participating in this stuff since I was a kid. And it, it just, I love it. I love watching execution. And I think that's why for the longest time, I haven't really had an NFL team. I follow players because I want to see players who execute at a high, high level. And I don't care where they're playing. I'm interested in watching you know, that's why I, I like to watch Tom Brady play. It's it's an incredible thing. I, I don't know as a human being and all that stuff, I don't really have an opinion. But from a football standpoint, 45 years old, being able to accomplish what he's accomplished, I want to watch that. And I want to see that train go as long as possible as he feels fit and wanting to do it because it's a marvel. I mean, I'd like to see it break down towards, you know, the last stop. Like, I'd like to see him have just a real terrible season this year. It would make <laughs> it would make my year. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. There's definitely people seeing that. But I mean, at this point, OK, you can have a terrible season where they say, oh, you hung on too long. Yeah, I mean, it's still been 25 the, years. You can't take the goat away. He's still the greatest of all time. Yeah. But I will uh, laugh and say that he was terrible with a supporting cast if he is bad. But here's the thing that happens to damn near everybody. Right. Just watch that happen to Ben. That last season is always that worse. And it's like, mm, I should have called it. I should have called it, ended on a high note. Um, and it's not how they want it to be. And then there's like, man, it's not worth it. Right. Because it's worth it when you have that high in your mind of that Super Bowl win or of that, man, I got to the championship. We were so close. Let's run it back and do it again. Right. But if it's terrible, it's kind of hard mentally to convince yourself to go get this thing again right um but when you talk about like the teams you know i think about how similar that is in business everybody has to execute their tasks at a high level all the time and everything can be great you know if we've got you know 80 90 trainers across the country if you know off leash canine as an organization gosh we probably have close to i don't know seven eight hundred trainers potentially and you know, it, one trainer not doing what they're supposed to be doing in an appropriate way can really cause a lot of issues, you know, for the organization as a whole. Just like 10 dudes on the football field doing their task, running their assignments, executing it damn near perfectly, one dude takes that play off, whole thing blows up. It could be something catastrophic for that team 
in that game by some, by an outcome that happens. And so I, I think maybe one of the reasons I, I love watching like the inner dynamics of teams and how they motivate each other and what they work through is I want that for my team. And I want to think businesses operate that way as well. Cause if, if there's one person carrying everybody, eventually that person's going to get tired and they're going to get over it. And they're like, what the hell am I doing? They're going to go find, if you're in a team environment and you're, you're loafing, the killers are either going to find new people to be on their team by trying to get coaching management within a business to bring in different people, or they're going to be looking for opportunities to bounce somewhere where they feel more appreciated. Right. And so it's when you're on a team, doesn't matter whether you're the face of that team, you're low man on the totem pole. It doesn't matter if you're Tom Brady, or you're, you know, the guard, it, everybody's task is important. And if you're dependent upon each other, you have to execute. And it doesn't matter if you're not in the limelight or not, if you're not executing your tasks at a high level, you're impacting the entire team, the entire organization. And so the killers on these teams, the, the stars, if you will, the people handling you know, heavy, heavy caseload and, and high production and, you know, bringing in, you know, new, new deals, or they're the ones scoring touchdowns, whatever it may be. If they're not supported by a group of people that are on that same mission, that same page and bought in, and they're not contributing to their task, whether they're high level tasks or not, winning recognizes winning real recognizes real. So if I know Kelsey, who's an amazing admin on our team, she deals with all the clients uh, for a couple of our locations after they get signed up. If, if they're, if clients reach out to us, they have a great experience with Almeris or Katie or myself, you know, or Peyton or whoever, you know, when they're reaching out and inquiring with about training and we get them signed up now that, and we tell them what this process is going to look like. And then Kelsey comes in and Kelsey carries them through registration and getting set up and prepared for training. Then the trainer comes in and handles the training part. And that part's exceptional. If, if Kelsey, even though nobody knows who Kelsey is from the outside, looking into the business, Kelsey's a super important part of our business. And if she was slacking on her tasks and responsibilities, it doesn't matter that my name is the one on stuff and off leash canine logos are all over everything. And, uh, people are like, Oh, I want to talk to Josh There's a problem, whatever there's team in place. It, it doesn't matter that her name isn't the one on the sign. Her role is just as important and her tasks are just as important as mine or anybody else's because if her part of the process fails, the whole thing blows up. If, my part of the process on the front end fails. The whole thing blows up. If everything's perfect, we get to the trainer, they fail in their process. The whole thing blows up. So everybody's got to execute, but in order to execute, everybody has to be on the same page. Everybody has to know that mission. Everybody has to understand the values of which you operate by. And everybody has to have a clear vision, you know, for moving forward. So that team dynamic is so, so, so important. So I challenge you today, if you're listening, what's your team dynamic like? If if you don't have a team and you're growing your business, you just got your little startup that you're, you're doing your side hustle and you want to build it, before you start bringing people in, you need to be thinking about what do I want my team to feel like? What do I want this dynamic to look like? Is this vision something that, yes, I can see it, but can I feel it? Can I touch it? And can I convey that to somebody else in a way that they're motivated, fired up and, and ready to roll? A buddy of mine, new friend of mine, Justin, um, who I met in May, he actually won. I need to get him on the show. Actually, Justin was one of the winners of the um, tickets for the trip out to million dollar mastermind back in June. And great, great guy he has a really cool um, uh auto graphics, uh, rap business customization and similar to our buddy Jack out here who does our vans for us. And, you know, since, you know, coming out to that event and meeting with us and stuff, he's transitioned out of his full-time job. He's all in on his business and he's actually just brought in, you know, his first hire. So we need to get him on here to talk about his business and, and that process and hype it up. But it has me thinking about, it's like, man, he's got to be setting that tone right now 
for what does this look like? Because as you're growing and all of your clients before you've made that first hire, they're accustomed to your experience, the experience that you provided. When it was just me training dogs, I was doing every board and train, every lesson, every client call, every follow up, every refresher, every sale. It was just me. So for a long time, that was the only experience. There was no other experience to compare it to. And so over the years, we've had to teach other people how to maintain that experience because you can't water it down so much. So you got to be able to communicate what that vision is, what that value, what the values are, what that mission is, and get everybody on the same board so everybody executes at a high, high level. Um, so team, it's just been on my mind. You know, my team's growing. We're excited about that. Um, you know, we've had a lot of people the last couple months, you know, we have a lot of military families in our area, so they've gotten orders and transitioned out. And so it's been a, a changing time, but I'm really excited about the people we've had come in and, um, we just continue to build that team and football season coming on has just had it on my mind. So again, I push and encourage you. What does your team look like? Does your team look and operate how you want it to? If it doesn't, what steps do you need to be taking? Because it's your responsibility as a leader to make those adjustments and communicate them well. So if it doesn't look and feel how you want it to, what do you need to do to address that? If you don't have a team yet and you're going to be building one up, do you even have a vision, an idea of what you want your team to look like in order you, you to grow your business and impact more people? So think on that. You know, let us know, you know, your thoughts on it. If you have questions about it, you need help on it, hit us up. We appreciate you listening to the show. Please share, comment, leave a review, and we'll catch you next week in the Big Dog Podcast.